I am fortunate enough to stay in a pretty green area in the middle of the suburbs in Cape Town. We are surrounded by quite a few parks, a green belt or two and as such, our garden has a variety of denizens that call it home. Over the past year I have recorded every creature I spot in and around the garden and this video is the result of that. Some creatures are a bit more useful than others. Some creatures are a bit more scary than others. And today we are going to meet a few of them boys that call my garden home. What inspired this video was when last summer our garden was absolutely invaded by the golden orb weaver spider. We first noticed them show up on the washing line in the back of the house but they soon migrated to the front garden and took over. I counted 16 large females in total but multiple males often share the web with these females, up to 3 paired up with one female so that means there was about 40 spiders in total. It was amazing seeing them so close up for a few months. Every single morning I would come out and check on them and see them busy themselves. The mornings were when they performed maintenance on their webs. Sometimes they would be snipping out old leaves. Other times they would just be fixing holes in their webs from the previous day's hunting. And as you can see their web is something else, especially with that iconic golden sheen present. They are very successful hunters and this one specific female here really became gigantic as the weeks went by. I'm a bit arachnophobic but I really wanted to give her just a tiny little squeeze, you know? Unfortunately, one day we started noticing the large females just disappearing and seeing big holes in their webs. So we assume birds eventually just pick them all off one by one and it was pretty sad. And the funny thing was that it was only the large females that got snatched. Most webs still had the tiny males present and just chilling. So the patriarchy even exists in the spider kingdom ladies and gentlemen. Terrible. The Cape Dwarf Gecko is one of the most common sights in South African households. These cute geckos can usually be found sticking to most walls. Sometimes they can be found out with their kids hunting a variety of small bugs. When they are younger though they are as much prey as they are predators as they are absolutely tiny but they can already stick to pretty much any surface. I mean they're barely as big as a written word on this page here. Like many lizards they can discard their tails in order to get away from predators but they also use their tails to help them stick to surfaces so it's a big sacrifice for them to use this defense mechanism. So generally you'd want to avoid disturbing them if you can help it. The brown widow, ladies and gentlemen, or the brown button spider as it's also known. They have the easily identifiable red hourglass on their abdomens like their scarier cousins, the black widow, but they have a distinct brown coloration. They are also easily identifiable by their egg sacs which look like giant pollen spores. They also have a very distinct sock shaped web. You can see one wrapping up a big hairy caterpillar here. There are two conflicting views that they originated from South Africa while other scientists think that they actually originated in South America. They aren't as poisonous as their cousin the black widow but their bite still hurts. 
And as you can see, they often make nests on outdoor furniture. So bites happen. The Hardida. The Hardida is a local icon. They're a type of ibis with a distinct metallic sheen to their feathers. They also have an even more distinct coloration on their cheeks that are referred to as mustaches. Very distinguished. These birds mostly hang around wetlands when they're in the wild, but they can also regularly be seen in the suburbs in properties with well manicured lawns. Wet soil is ideal for hardidas to forage in with their long thin beaks. You often see them show up after people have watered their gardens or after it has rained, which has given them the reputation with local people of being bringers of rain. These videos don't really do justice to how big they are. They often knock over pot plants when foraging or fleeing. They are pretty flighty, but they still can't resist coming back for one last bug when they see one. They also eat small reptiles like this one who's caught a mole snake in the garden. They seem to often hang around in pairs but you also see them in large groups, like here in our regularly watered and tended school field. And of course here you'll hear that distinct call where they get their names from. Just beautiful. I will have this Redditor give you some idea of what it's like living with Hardy does. I feel like I'm at my wit's end here. For the past month, a hardida has been coming through my front door, which faces the garden. It promptly shits on the floor, right by the entrance, and then flees. This has been going on for the better part of a month now. I've never caught it in the act, but I know damn well it's responsible, as I see it skulking around the garden. I leave my door open so my dogs can get in and out of the house, but this hardy die is terrorizing my floor with its constant shitting. What can I do to prevent this guy from continuously ruining my floor? The Egyptian goose. Actually a duck. They're pretty hard to get on camera because they're pretty flighty. They can be found all around Africa and they are very territorial. You often see them here locally on rooftops, just honking. Here one goose has teamed up with a local dog with one eye to protect the owner's yard. I often visit these two and recently, as you can see, the goose has hurt its foot. But I'm glad to report that the last time I saw them, his foot is all better. The grey squirrel. The grey squirrel is technically an invasive species here in the Western Cape, but they have actually managed to carve their own local niche and aren't a threat to native squirrel species. They bury food all over the garden for winter, and they also pretend to bury food when they know I'm watching them. Like literally they would rub their little hands in the soil and the leaf litter pretending to bury something just to trick me. Very, very sneaky indeed. They make a little squirrel bark when they're threatened, but they don't seem to be too scared if you bribe them with food. And they don't seem to mind Boris the cat, and he doesn't seem to mind them either. Musk beetles. These unique beetles are a pretty rare sight. This is the first time I have seen one. They look a bit out of place with that shine. They are found most commonly in Europe, so I think this will be considered an invasive species here locally. If you draw so much attention, you need a pretty good defense against predators. The musk beetle emits a musky smell if it gets poked enough. <laughs> <laughs> Just like my eggs. You will also note that they've got these epic antennae that um, I don't really know what they use them for. Feeling stuff, I would assume. 
thick knees or the dikop as we call them locally. It's another unique native bird species. You see them on the side of the road every now and then, and at night you can often hear their distinct calls. They bond for life, so this is most likely a husband and wife pair we are looking at here. They live on the ground and hunt things by chasing them down, so I always assumed they were some kind of roadrunner, but they are actually a type of shore or wader bird. They are able to fly, but they nest and hunt on the ground. You can see its great camouflage, making it quite hard to spot even in a suburban environment. For defense, they will take up this characteristic pose, showing off the amazing markings on their feathers. Very nice. The leaf-footed bug. These bugs drink the sap from flowers and are also called twig wilter bugs. Here they have infested this bush, but it doesn't seem to bother the plant as the plant's doing great and so are the bugs. Yep. Mothers, fathers, children, all just chilling and that's okay with me. No harm, no foul. Sure, they fornicate in front of the children, but um... Well, but nothing, that's pretty disgusting. Helmeted guinea fowl, another native bird species here in South Africa. These birds are everywhere. They also have a very distinct call you will hear in the evenings. They're one of the oldest bird species on Earth, and they're a common sight locally in the suburbs. They can be a bit of a hazard on busy roads because they move in bunches and often just congregate on corners like here. The robber fly or assassin fly. Not exactly common, but you do see them around. I mean, you can't miss them. It looks like a dragonfly had a baby with a housefly. The robber fly uses its stabby mouth parts to hunt. Its saliva is neurotoxic and also helps digest the insides of its prey. Gross! You can see one here has caught a housefly, which is pretty impressive if you think about it. Just for reference, here is an actual dragonfly. And as you can see with this hand for scale, this one is an absolute unit. The open grass with the peripheral plants and shrubs of our garden is the ideal hunting space for the dragonfly and robber fly. Mantis babies. Green mantises are a common sight in most gardens, but recently we found a mantis egg sac on our curtain, just as the babies were hatching. If you look at the egg sac, you can see one trying to poke through. They are so tiny, but look a bit epic here on this curtain with the shadow falling behind them. Here is one a few days later looking pretty healthy. The grey coffee snout beetle or garden bane weevil as it's also known. A native but naughty weevil species found locally in South Africa. You don't often see them unless you have a delicious garden for them to hang out in. The red-headed cockroach, ladies and gentlemen. Another native to South Africa species. This is the first time I've ever seen one. I know it's crawling around on my dinner plate, which is pretty disgusting, but as I said, I've never seen one before and I just had to take a chance to get a shot of it. Not to mention, it's also bigger than me, so I don't want to take any chances and start a fight with it. I think these are also known as bush cockroaches, but I'm not 100% sure on that. The fruit chafer beetle. The black and white fruit chafer beetle is a type of scarab. The yellow and black variant are very common in local gardens, but I've never seen the black and white version before. I don't know what's up with its hind legs though, it seems to be going a bit lame. 
And finally, the elusive mole, ladies and gentlemen. Here, Boris is just keeping an eye on it, but unfortunately, we could not get a nice shot of it. <laughs> 